Hello, Center City Church, Pastor Mark here, continuing on our teaching series on Many Are Called But Few Are Chosen. It is Wednesday night, June 19th, and I hope that you're catching this either before or after you've attended the Newsboys Conference because they are here in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Uh, at Curve Stadium, so I hope you're out there. You or, or either have come or will go worship and praise uh, to the Lord tonight at Curve Stadium. But for those that we wanted to continue on this teaching series, many are called, but few are chosen, and we've been talking about different seasons of life that you go through, from the Father's house and the story of Joseph to Potiphar's house to the prison. And this week, we're not going to talk about the palace. We're just not going to do it because I want to save it for next week. But this week, I'm going to present to you something that I think is a really key in each one of these seasons of your life. And it's really based in two simple words. We use them all the time in our vocabulary. And those words are opportunity and obstacle. Opportunity an obstacle. And so here's the definition of an opportunity. It is a circumstance that makes something possible, a circumstance that makes something possible. And an obstacle is something that blocks, hinders, or prevents us from moving forward, prevents something from happening. And so this is a really key as you walk in the call that God has for your life. And remember, there's many different calls. He calls us to repentance. He calls us um, into forgiveness, but he also calls and pulls and promotes up people in various stages of their lives. But he takes you through the process of that and it's to build character, it's to build maturity. And we've talked about different uh, terms of that, that allow us to go through that maturing process we've got to be loyal we've got to be faithful with the little and we've got to allow God to continue to mature us and to process us through these different seasons and stages in life as he continues to call us into who and what he's created us to be and so opportunity versus obstacle depending on how you look at things this is a real key i asked someone today i said what do you think of those two words i said well i guess it depends on how you look at it what's your perspective what's your perception and so the reality of these two words opportunity or obstacle depends on how you're going to view it how are you going to uh, posture your heart, posture your mind when it comes to each one of these words, because in some ways they the same thing can present it, be presented, but thought of two different ways. And so we're going to take a look tonight and and today at Matthew chapter fifteen in the the story of Jesus and the four thousand. And so this is such a fascinating story. You've heard it, uh, you know, tons and tons of times. Different principles, different keys coming out of this. But I want you to think through the filter of opportunity and obstacle. Because as the scripture goes, the disciples and Jesus, they're there, they're, you know, got all these people around and it comes up to the hour as time to eat. And it says that Jesus had compassion on them. He had compassion on them. So he was moved to do something about their situation. And he realized, man, it's late. They're probably getting hungry. And the disciples immediately, immediately look at this as an obstacle. In fact, they say, where could we get enough food? Where can we get it? Oh man, can you imagine? You're faced with something and you're like, I, I just don't know how to get around this. How, I mean, we're in the middle of, we're, we're, there's no fast food, there's no convenience store, there's no Martin's grocery store down the street. They're going, where are we gonna get the food for what we need? There's a huge obstacle. We don't have enough for everyone, but Jesus. <laughs> but Jesus says something completely different. He says this, how many, and this is talking about fishes and loaves, how many do you have? See, he didn't look at this from the perspective of there's an obstacle in our way. We only have this little bit, and what are we going to do to do all this? It was how many do you have? And you can say that, and if you really think about that statement, you can say that in two ways. One, you say, how many do you have? Or how many do you have? Because you can say it both ways. And, and the disciples were in that down and that down and out of this is an obstacle. This is something we can't overcome. What are we going to do? And the reality is Jesus is like, don't worry about that because this is an opportunity. 
This is an opportunity to glorify God. This is an opportunity to, to uh, watch my father do a miracle, an opportunity to watch something miraculous happen right before our very eyes. And so he gathers up the fishes and loaves and, he, and we praise and he, we know the story. They just multiply and multiply and multiply. And the reality is that very obstacle that the disciples saw became a God-sized opportunity. And so I want to ask you the question on your journey, on the, the many are called, you're called, you're called and God is working you and, and pushing you and prodding you and leading you and guiding you through a process. But he's also seeing how your heart and your mind position and posture themselves towards things we might call an obstacle or we might call opportunity. And so I say to you today, I want you to take some time today and look at some of the things in your life and say, is this, and I've been viewing this very thing as an obstacle in my life or God, what are you up to? What is the opportunity you've placed before you? Because see, it's easy to say when good things are going on, these are great opportunities. Look at this, I'm, I'm blessed and I'm this and I'm that. But what happens when, when something like we're out of food, we don't have the resources we, we need to get in this situation, or we're, we're, we're desperately facing something that seems so insurmountable, what do we do? Do we back up and say, well, this obstacle is too much for me? It's this obstacle is gonna overtake me. It's preventing me from what I wanna do and I'm just gonna turn around, I'm just gonna give up. I say no. I say look at it and say, oh obstacles, oh you great mountain, ha, who are you? And you can speak grace, grace to that thing and you watch it fall down. In fact, the building you're looking at behind me and those of you that attend this church, you know where I'm standing. I'm standing on the balcony and I'm overlooking this beautiful stained glass from a building built hundreds of years ago or hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago. And the reality is this building was one of those things. This building was one of those pieces that if you were to look before, you would have said, this is too much of an obstacle. In fact, many people said, um, when we were looking at it, they said, oh, no, don't, don't do that. No, 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 no. Because right back over in here, there was holes and things were falling down and, and, and there was actually a big uh, blowout right over there and, and it went down through the next floor. People were like, don't do that. That is such an obstacle. <laughs> it's a big problem you guys are gonna have, but God. But God said, no, I have a building for this church. I have a building for my presence. And so this obstacle wasn't looked at as an obstacle, it was an opportunity to bring the glory of God into the center of the city of Altoona. It was an opportunity to bring God's presence into this place to awaken people to him, to revive them in, in his presence, and then to transform their lives. And many lives have been shaped and, and changed and transformed in this place, this very place, all because not because there was an obstacle in the way, but because there was opportunity that if we were to take it, to seize it, and to move forward, who knows what could happen? Just like when Jesus grabbed those fishes and he grabbed those loaves and he just prayed and said, Father, you know, have your way, have your way. And when he did that, they multiplied and they multiplied and they multiplied. And so I say to you, don't look at that very thing that you feel like has been hindering you and holding you up. It's actually God's opportunity to invade your space, to present to you a miracle sign or wonder that only God can do. And so whether you see it as, a, or whether you're, you're going back and forth, I say God is setting you up for something. And so I want to encourage you today because this building behind me is a miracle sign and wonder. It should have been condemned and probably knocked down. Like one of the buildings that were down the street, one of the churches down the street was on the very day that this building, this sanctuary was dedicated was a similar building was knocked down. Its last blocks were taken down just two or three blocks down the street. And so God, we just thank you for this place. And I, I wanna just pray for you that are watching. I wanna just say, God has presented you an opportunity in the midst of what you think is an obstacle and God is gonna just take you right through that thing. 
He's gonna give you the peace in the middle of that thing. And I just pray, Lord, that you would help those that are um, discouraged right now, that watch this in a place of discouragement, God, you would lift them and you would lift their eyes upon you because the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I pray and I speak joy to you that God is gonna open up that door. He is going to um, push you past that obstacle that you think has been holding you up, whether that be for one day, one week, one month, or one year, that thing is about to move and the reason it's going to move is because you're moving because you're changing the way you think the way you you're you're looking in that circumstance is that not it's not it's not an obstacle it's a God-sized opportunity. And so I wanna encourage you tonight, God is up to opening doors and opportunities all around in the midst of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I just speak to you tonight and say, God is on the move and he is opening up opportunities all around us. Will we perceive it? And so I wanna just say amen to you guys. Hopefully, like I said, you, were, you got to worship God through that concert of Newsboys. But this is my Wednesday night opportunity versus uh, obstacles. May you be blessed tonight and just, just, just be in a place to posture your heart and mind toward the kingdom of God. All right, we wish you, I wish you the best, church. Love you. Have a wonderful evening. Bye.